Good morning. It's good to be with you again. It's Monday morning. Today is Monday, December 5th, and I'm pleased to be with you again this Monday morning. Today the winter is really starting to settle in here in central Illinois. There's no snow, but the cold is getting thicker, more like a blanket that's going to be, be with us for a while. So that is a a stage that leads to a, a state rather that leads to a lot of heaviness and a lot of feelings of heaviness given the holidays and all kinds of business. And that's what we're going to get into today. And I'm not expressing it very well to start off. Let me introduce myself. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor at the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis in Nyanic, Illinois. Today I want to talk to you about how we can process difficult emotions. Given the context of this time of year, and if you live in a colder climate like I do here in central Illinois, then you know that it's cold. It's humid cold, that kind of cold that's like a blanket, and it's going to be with us for a while. The days are markedly shorter. There's a whole lot of dark each day and there are a whole lot of emotions. So this time of year with a lot of different feasts and parties, a lot of different expectations that are upon us, a lot of different gatherings of family and friends, the year end crunch, depending on what vocation you are in, all of those things can come together and create a lot of anxiety within us. So I wanna address that a little bit today. And I want to talk about processing the difficult emotions. Difficult emotions are hard to process precisely because they are difficult. And a lot of times they just compound and compound because there are so many different factors that go into our context of receiving them. Like I mentioned, the weather, your end expectations, parties, our diets are different, our activity is probably different. So all of those things come together and create a reality for us that we have a different container, if you will, for handling the stress and the anxiety that we experience this time of year. So I want to talk about some different steps you can take, four steps in particular, to help work through all of these things and have a more peaceful holiday season. And the first thing I want to talk about in the midst of all of this is be aware of your numbing behaviors. What do I mean by numbing behaviors? Numbing behaviors are those go-to comfort emotions that we turn to to kind of to kind of check out a little bit from what we're feeling. For some folks, uh, a numbing behavior might be playing video games or binge watching TV shows and movies. Uh, uh, food, drugs, alcohol, or the, here's the most common one, overscheduling ourselves so we stay too busy to pay attention to what's upon us. Anybody identify with that one? Yeah, a good way to avoid what we're feeling or what we need to address within ourselves. That can be a lot. A good way to avoid that is to just stay busy where we don't have time to even notice, let alone address it. And we do these things in a variety of ways, which I mentioned. These don't help us to process. These push that work back and actually kind of make it a bigger deal. It's kind of like laundry. If you have a load of laundry, yeah, it's a pain. Who likes to do laundry? But you wash that load, you fold it and put away, it's done. If you keep pushing it back, the laundry builds. There's more and more to do, and then soon you've got to spend your whole day, like it or not, because we all need clothes to wear, especially when it's cold, and we have so much more to do. So instead of engaging in numbing behaviors, let's address these head on, process them, and move them on along the way. So the first thing is notice your numbing behaviors, and you can probably identify these within yourselves pretty easily know when you're engaging in them. And I'm not saying to never do these things. These things in their own merits are fine in moderation and as long as they're not preventing us from doing the things we need to do. So then once we are aware that we're engaging in these numbing behaviors and we're gonna stop doing that for a moment, 
the next step would be to identify our emotions. A lot of us don't know or understand where, why, and how their emotions, where they're coming from, what they are, how they're affecting us, and typically we base our emotional reasoning on what we feel at the moment, or we brush it aside. So to process our emotions, we need to understand what they actually are. And emotions are energy. They're energy that is trapped inside of our body. That's all it is. Energy trapped inside our body. Think about a happy time in your life, a joyful time, uh, a time when you wanted to just cheer. Maybe you're, uh, if you're a sports person, maybe your sports team had a great, fantastic play that made you happy, or maybe they had a win over their rivals. And you don't keep that inside, you don't tamp it down, you're like, oh, a cheer, yeah! We're happy we express those. That's energy that's built up in our bodies that we express. And then once we express it, that energy is different. It's gone. It's, it's transformed into something else. So the same is true when it's a negative or difficult emotion. It's energy trapped in our body. So take a minute and think about what that feels like. We know what the good feels like. We know what it feels like when we're excited, when our team has done something that we love or uh, someone else has done something when our child just makes us belly laugh. All of these things, all of these good, happy things, we know what that energy feels like. Let's take a minute and think about what the other kind of energy feels like, the less pleasant kind of energy. When we feel um, annoyed, when we feel disappointed, when we feel anger or grief, and it's important to be as specific as possible as you can, in understanding these emotions, but where do you feel them in your body? Where do you feel anger? I usually feel it in my stomach and then it just kind of rises up. Uh, when I feel worried or stress, it can feel like a knot in my shoulders and neck, sometimes even in my lower back. Where do you feel what you're feeling? Are your hands clenched? Do you feel light as a feather or heavy like a brick? How would you describe that feeling in your body? That helps you to understand how you can process your emotions. Just as we process the emotion of elation or celebration or joy with a physical action or response, we need to do the same thing with the negative emotions, but let's be clear in that we don't express it in a way that's harmful to others. And I don't like to hear this. I don't imagine you like to hear this, but the best way to process that energy and get it out of our bodies is to jump on a treadmill, jump on an elliptical, or take a walk around the block. Do something physical. Do it for five minutes. Do it for five minutes. Go hard for five minutes. Go all out. And I guarantee your body is going to feel better. It's just how all these things work. It's all interconnected. You're gonna have clarity on your feelings and you're probably gonna have an idea of what you need to do in order to, to move forward. So identify your numbing behaviors and understand where your emotions are in your body and what, what they are. Then what are they telling you? What message are your emotions trying to communicate with you? That's number three. And this is an important one. Let me give you an example for me. In, in what I do, December is a very heavy time of year. There are a lot of people and people experience a lot of heavy emotions and I become a place that to receive all of those in December can be a really difficult time of year for me. It can become overwhelming. Plus there are budgets and all of these year-end things that come together and December is very stressful. Add to that that with the weather changes and the cold weather setting in, I don't adapt quickly to an exercise regimen. That's not my strong suit. So behind this screen is my elliptical. I need to be better about getting on that, but it takes me a while. So when December comes, 
My diet has often changed because it's after Thanksgiving and there are holiday parties. Also, my activity level has changed and my engagement with other people is taking on a lot of stress, a lot of grief and sadness, and there are year-end pressure points. So I know all this about myself and I know all this about my life in December and I know how it feels in my body and I know I need to make some changes in order to care for myself. So my emotions this time of year are telling me to step back, jump on the elliptical, get some physical activity. And for me, that makes such a huge difference. And being an all or none type of person, I often fall into the trap of thinking, okay, I have to do this 30 minute weightlifting routine and a 30 minute cardio session. And those are great. That would be fantastic for me. But to make a difference in my day-to-day -day life, really what I need to do is commit to five minutes. Commit to five minutes when I'm feeling the stress throughout the day. Find five minutes and just go all out on the elliptical. That's what my emotions tell me this time of year. And what emotions are they? I get irritable. I get cranky. I get short-tempered. And that's what the emotions tell me. They tell me I need to take better care of myself. So find time to really think about what your emotions are telling you. Are you constantly scrolling through social media? Maybe that's a sign that you need a break from social media. Are you always bumping heads with a coworker? Maybe your emotions there are telling you that there's an issue between you two that you need to address or to resolve but listen to what your emotions are trying to tell you. And then finally, express them. Express them in healthy ways. Uh, expressing those emotions looks different for every person. Some people express them by talking to a friend. Some people engage in physical activity. Others do art or music. Some people put on their tunes really loud and just dance through their house ridiculously for a little bit. Others maybe journal. Whatever it is for you, take time to express those. And then remember that emotional outlets should always be a safe place. So if you are engaging in numbing, harmful, or illegal expressions of emotions, that's only going to harm you and perpetuate what you're feeling. So remember the laundry analogy. Unless you do the laundry, the laundry is going to keep building up. Well, let's be honest, the laundry is always going to keep building up, but it's a little more manageable when we take it into chunks. The same is true with our emotional health. We are always going to be feeling emotions. There are always going to be some difficult ones and some processing we need to do, but take it as they come. Don't just numb yourself out because that's going to come back to you in January and February when it's still dark outside, when it's still cold outside and there's not a lot going on. So take the time as they come up and process them. And then you can lean into these dif different experiences we have of the holidays. Whatever your holiday is in the Christian tradition, Jewish tradition, or whatever tradition you're in, I hope it is a blessed one. I hope for you that this year you connect profoundly with the people that you love and I hope that you're able to process the difficult emotions so that you can be fully present in all of the depth that this time of year brings. That's what I have for you today, and I'll see you next Monday. Bye for now.